Hi there, I'm Vangelis Karadimas of VK Tunes. Uh, we are starting a series uh, to present Anima Shooter software. We collaborate with Anima Shooter for some years now. Um, it is a uh, mainly stop motion uh, software, uh, I can say that, but uh, I assure you that uh, as a 2D animator it is really helpful for uh, animation for traditional animation too. I have run a lot of uh, uh, pencil and line tests uh, using it, this uh, software and it is uh, really great uh, for this uh, kind of things. I also intend to use it for educational reasons. I'm gonna start uh, uh, some uh, lessons in uh, schools uh, and uh, it is the software I intend to use uh, with the children, uh, mainly because I believe stop motion it is it is something is a kind of animation easier for the kids to uh, play with at the beginning, since they will use uh, uh, material they already uh, love, so they can move on uh, after that. Well, I can uh, already tell you that. Uh, Anima Shooter has uh, three versions. The junior version is free and it allows you to uh, use on your skin and uh, some of the more, most uh, um, popular uh, features for animating. And you can use your high definition webcam to start animating right away. Then uh, there is the Pioneer. Uh, version. You can uh, purchase a license for 33 dollars. I guess that is about um, 29-30 euros. Uh, you can also animate using your webcam, your high definition webcam, but there are some extra features uh, in this uh, version. And then there is the capture version, uh, the version I use. Uh, not only it has some uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, features uh, added, uh, but it also allows you to use your uh, Canon DSLR camera and uh, animating uh, in uh, really high standards. Uh, there, it costs uh, uh, forty-eight dollars per license. Uh, I think that it is about. 43 euros or something like that. So let's have a look on this software now, shall we? So let's have a look at the interface of Anima Shooter first of all. Uh, we have this windows over here, the capture window, the main window where uh, the action will uh, take place. You can see here that you can connect your uh, camera, uh, your webcam or your DSLR camera if you have one. You can also do that from uh, the upper right corner uh, right here. Uh, you have also the timing window where you can uh, preview uh, your uh, animation. The video uh, window where you can uh, watch the rendered uh, uh, video you created and the docs uh, window where you can uh, have a look on uh, specific uh, things about uh, Anima Shooter and uh, get an idea of what is going on uh, here. Let's go back to the capture window. Uh, these are uh, um, buttons uh, which are related to the activation of your uh, software. And uh, now let's go to the uh, left toolbar of our project. Here is the create new project. Uh, button you can uh, start creating a new project from here or even down here uh, you can uh, find uh, the same button in this uh, area uh, down uh, on uh, your screen the open project uh, file if you have already created um, a project you can access it from here or uh, from this button down here and the recent projects if it's something you've created uh, recently you can also access it from here 
So now let's connect our camera and see what we're doing here and start to have some uh, fun. Okay, I'm creating a little something. Uh, mostly I have it here as an example. There are three plastics in the bowls. Uh, so let's say that we start creating a project in order to uh, mainly uh, enable the rest of the buttons. So let's uh, name it uh, test 2. We're saving it and we're uh, starting to see now that we can uh, uh, we have enabled some of uh, the buttons we didn't have enabled before. So this is the save uh, button. The save project as mainly since it is uh, a new project and we are going to save it for the first time we will uh, use this button for the first time and then we can save it from this button over here uh, the show windows button uh, is used in case you have multiple uh, uh, screens available so let's move uh, down and see what we have here uh, show project in uh, file project and if you press that button, you can uh, see exactly where your uh, project is and uh, the files, the, uh, the folders where your uh, different elements are located. And this is the properties and settings button. What you can do from here, in case you have a DSLR camera, you can get it from here. We don't have one or you can uh, access your web cameras, the project properties. You can uh, uh, add some uh, metadata here, the name, the title, the director, scene layer, etc. And uh, there is also this uh, window about Anima Shooter, where you can see some details about the software or even access the website by pressing uh, this button over here. Um, now, uh, the main uh, window again. We have these uh, uh, these three main windows. The capture window shows us what we have already captured. Let's start. Let's uh, create uh, a frame here. So this is our first frame, and we can see it in this window. Uh, in uh, the live view window, we can see what is going on right now. Uh, Let's say that we move a bit this ball. In our live view, we can see this ball as it is right now. In the captured uh, window, we see the already uh, captured frames. In the reference uh, uh, window, uh, mainly we can use it with onion skin in case we are uh, starting uh, moving things and we want them to be in relation with uh, other frames. Then we can uh, work on that. So let's go back to live view for now. Let's have a look at uh, these uh, things uh, down here. Uh, you can adjust the frame size. You can do that also uh, from uh, the uh, upright uh, corner here. So in this case we're working with uh, a standard definition uh, project. Let's adjust the camera. Uh, anyway we don't uh, create something really right now. Uh, you can adjust the frames per second. It is uh, here in uh, 25. You can get it to 24 or 30 or uh, well, whatever you want. It is on uh, your disposal. Um, you can also enable the grid right here in case it can help you. Um, so now let's move to the uh, timeline and see what we have here this add button uh, in case you have some pictures you would like to uh, 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 to import to the, your project you can access them from here replace is uh, another button which uh, allows you to replace the existing uh, frame with uh, another one uh, the clear button uh, is enabled in case you want to uh, 
clear some frames of your project, not deleting them, it is a different uh, uh, process. We will talk about it uh, in another video. You have the duplicate uh, button, you can duplicate uh, a frame. Let's see it here in action. Insert one duplicate, or you can uh, import up to nine duplicates. So let's just import one duplicate. Okay, you can see it here. We have two duplicates of the uh, frame. Uh, in case you want to move some frames to a different place uh, in the project, so let's say we have. Uh, let's get some frames additional so now let's say that uh, we want this uh, these two uh, frames to look at them at the end of the project you can uh, press this button uh, we can delete permanently uh, some frames by pressing this button here it asks do you want to delete it yes so it is off to select in case uh, you have selected some frames and uh, you don't want them selected anymore to select uh, this is the mirror button in case we have a, a captured frame and we press that it changes the orientation from right to left uh, we have the button with some info about this uh, frame too. You can close that window from here. Uh, update the static frames indication. Now uh, we will see that in another uh, episode. Let's correct this uh, frame here. And uh, well, now if we had uh, enabled the onion skin, we would. Uh, have this uh, with this uh, uh, button uh, we could uh, watch both captioned and reference frames it's not the case right now so we're leaving it for another uh, video so now let's have some uh, uh, fun let me just show you what you can uh, initially do with uh, this uh, software it's very simple but uh, it is fun so let's start moving things around.